Oh, fans. Most people think of them as the mechanism to just display the RGB, but do they actually make a measurable difference in the cooling of your system? Or can I just let the rainbow gods reign supreme without consequence at all in my system? Well, let's find out. Origin PC is a high quality custom PC build maker that provides you endless possibilities to build you your dream PC rig. Whether that's custom water cooled or AIO cooled builds, or fully customized builds or pre configured builds, Origin PC has got you covered. They can even do sweet custom designs on the cases using the latest in print technology to take your brand or custom build to the next level. Check it all out at OriginPC.com. If it's one thing I've noticed in my two plus years of doing this whole content creation thing is that people use fans so much more for about displaying their build personality as they do for actually what they're supposed to be doing, which is cooling your system. But so often people don't seem to care about the fans they use. And I think sometimes folks wonder, do they actually make that big of a difference when it comes to cooling your system? Well, today we put that whole premise to the test and take two fans with wildly varying degrees of performance and test just how much they impact the cooling of a system. Also, at the end of this video, we will be covering a number of RGB and non-RGB fan options so you can make a wise purchase decision about your upcoming or current build and also ensure you get your personality in while also ensuring you also get the best for your PC rig. I mean, you wanna be a responsible parent, right? PCs are people too. The system we will be testing this on is a fully custom water-cooled 12th gen 12900K paired with a Founders Edition RTX 3080 Ti, which is water-blocked of course, and cooled by two Corsair Hydro X series XR5 360 millimeter radiators. Now, huge shout out to Origin PC who provided this system for our team to do these kinds of crazy tests on and also look really good while doing it. Now for our fan config, we chose two very popular Corsair fan options that we've seen plenty of builds on. Regardless of the fans I choose, this applies across all fans. How you ask? It comes down to two numbers. The first is CFM or cubic feet per minute, which is the airflow or how much air a fan actually moves. This is usually more important on fans that aren't pushing air through things like radiators or heat sinks or CPU coolers and are more commonly known as airflow fans. We sound like so science video right now, like I need a lab coat. Okay, so airflow fans are gonna be the fans that you see in the front of the case that don't have like a front mounted AIO or all in one liquid cooler or as your exhaust fan that is pushing air out of the rear of the case. The second number is MMH2O, which stands for millimeter of water. But in this case, we're actually talking about a measurement of pressure. And this number is most important on fans that are used to push air through things like radiators in your all-in-one liquid coolers or on the heat sinks on your big CPU coolers like the U12A or D15 from Noctua. These are commonly referred to as high static pressure fans and they look different from airflow fans because the fans are meant to move air differently. Like how you're seeing on this diagram of high static pressure versus airflow fans. Okay, now that you have your basic knowledge out of the way and you understand the two most critical numbers when looking at fans, let's take a look at two of the fans we're testing in our Corsair 5000D airflow case. The first is the ever popular Corsair QL120. Pretty much some of the prettiest looking fans in the market, not just because of how much RGB they have in them, but also because of their reversible and they can look nice both directions. So when we look at the two key stats for the QL120, they have a CFM of 41.8 and an MMH2O or static pressure of 1.55. In the other corner is the latest fan from Corsair, the ML120 Elite RGB. Now these are new to the market and are the first of Corsair ML or magnetic levitation fans that have some of the same aesthetic characteristics as the QL fans in the fact that they actually look good in both directions. But unlike the QL fans, they only have 24 addressable RGB versus 32 in the QL. And I know for many of you, the RGB actually matters. So key stats on the ML120 Elites are a CFM of 58.10 and an MMH2O or static pressure of 2.90. Now that is a big jump in both CFM and static pressure over the flashier QL120s. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna stop saying MMH2O in the rest of the video and use static pressure instead because it sounds better and that's what we're actually measuring. 
Okay, so for our rig, which was a Corsair 5000D airflow with a 12900K cooled entirely by custom water-cooled system, we kept things simple and used the same fans for all of the function in the builds. We had a total of seven fans installed, three 120 millimeters on the side for intake, three 120 millimeters at the top for exhaust, as well as a single 120 millimeter in the rear for exhaust as well. Now, if you wanna know more about airflow direction and all that jazz, we actually have a whole video on air cooling and you can check that out right here. Let's take a look at the QL120 fans. We kick things off with both open and closed case scenarios. So we can show what this means to be like in an open case scenario like the Cougar Conquer, and also in a normal case like your 011 Mini Dynamic or your 011 Standard Dynamic. Now when we did open case in our Corsair 5000D, that means we removed every panel we could, including the side tempered glass. And when we do closed case, that means everything is back on and it looks just like how it would look if it was sitting on your desk in the finished build. So for open case at idle, we saw temperature sitting at 27 degrees for the CPU and 26 for the GPU. We saw the same temps in closed case with both 27 degrees for the CPU and 26 degrees for the GPU. Now, when we put both the GPU and the CPU under load, which if you wanna know more about how we test our cases and our video about all that stuff, you can check that out right here. Now in open case, we saw 77 degrees for the CPU and 47 degrees for our GPU. But when we switched to closed case, we saw things jump up to 81 for our CPU and 51 for our GPU. To be honest, these are not bad temperatures given the hardware inside of the system and perfectly healthy for a high-end gaming PC. So how did that compare to the ML120 Elite RGBs then, Roby? With the higher, more mighty numbers, did it make a measurable difference? Well, let's see, shall we? Calm down. Okay, so for idle in our open case, we saw 24 degrees for our CPU and 24 for the GPU, as well as a one degree jump to 25 for both GPU and CPU in the closed case scenario. When we compare that to our QL fans at idle, we can already see a two degree drop in temperature, which even surprised me. So given we saw a measurable change here at idle, what about when we went under load? Well, in the open case scenario, when under load, we saw 71 degrees on the CPU and 43 for our GPU. Versus in the closed case scenario, we saw 74 degrees for our CPU and 45 degrees for the GPU. That is a negative seven degree difference for CPU and a negative six degree difference for GPU under load versus the QL120s. That's actually a pretty big difference and a lot more headroom for overclocking, etc. if that is a path you wanted to pursue. Speaking of fans, are you a fan of this content? Then maybe do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button so we know you like this kind of content and we can make more content just like it. Also, let us know down in the comments below if there's other content you'd also like to see us make. Okay, Roby, so fun science experiment, and yes, you should have been wearing a lab coat, but what does this all mean? Do I need to go out and change all of my fans? Am I killing my PC right now? Wait, am I a monster? A am I a bad PC parent? Hold on. Don't panic. In short, and just like every video we make, the answer is never so cut and dry. See, remember at the end of the QL120 section when I finished reading off all those temperatures? Maybe you didn't because you're like eyes glazed over. But the point is, is that I said, to be honest, they're not bad temperatures given the hardware inside of the system and perfectly healthy for a high-end gaming system. Hence, why Origin PC ships with them. See, that's the crux of it here. You may be getting more than adequate cooling from a less performant fan and have the look that you actually want. As long as you have enough cooling elements in your build to properly cool what hardware you have. And if you're having performance problems or planning a new rig, you now know what to look for when selecting fans and making decisions about which fans to put in, far less voodoo and much more informed. I hope now when you're doing your PC part picking, which we do have a whole video on that as well, I don't know, it's kinda like we have a whole PC building university, you're gonna feel way more informed and confident in your fan choice. Now, as promised, I wanted to bring up a couple of charts here that are showing the most popular RGB and non-RGB fans pivoted in different ways. As a point of reference for reading these charts, remember CFM is good for unobstructed airflow like exhaust or intake fans in the front without radiators or liquid coolers, and your MMH2O is your radiator slash cooling fans with high static pressure. But if you wanna min-max your build, you wanna just ink out every single bit of performance, turn every single knob, then you may just wanna do like high airflow slash CFM fans for your intake and exhaust, and then for your radiators and cooling elements, use high static pressure fans. And that could be a mix, like Noctua NFF12s for all your radiators, and something like Nick Noctua AF12s for your airflow fans. Now here's the deal, don't worry if those charts are too fast for you and you didn't have the opportunity to sit there and read all of the individual numbers. We have links down in the description below, along with the same information so you can peruse at your leisure. But what did you think? Was this helpful? 
Did you learn something? Tell us your thoughts on this and more and maybe win a little cash in the process. First and foremost, you need to leave a quality comment down below along with liking and subscribing to the channel. Now when I say quality comment, it doesn't actually need to be positive. It just needs to be something you liked or didn't like about the video or maybe about fans. Something that surprised you perhaps. Just not I deserve to win and can I have a free high-end gaming PC or something similarly weird or lame. You also need to ensure we have a way to reach you via your YouTube profile, like your email. So put your email in your YouTube profile because we will be giving away $25 to one lucky comment below, that is worldwide, as long as you can accept PayPal or Venmo. So what did you think of the fan information? Was it good for you fans of Robitech? <laughs> Were you surprised by the difference it made? Are you rethinking your new build or your current build given this information? I would love to know all that and more down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button with that like button and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robitech. Did you know we have a live stream channel for like special builds and events and just everyday builds? Then check out Robitech Live down in the description below so you can like and subscribe and get the notification bell so you know when we go live here on YouTube. If you have questions about fans or fans curves or even my curves or any other tech related questions then check out our amazing discord server over at discord.gg robitech filled with other tech and pc enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts on ideas and on these very subjects are you looking for cheap tech then check out at robitech.com or at robitech deals on twitter we have our guy tom scouring the internet for the best deals on all things tech from pc components to tvs to your favorite fans. Finally, you can follow me and my team and all the other socials at Robitech absolutely everywhere. We hope you enjoyed this video and heck, we super hope that we see you on the next episode.